morning and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jason Barnett. I'm the Vice President of Sales at Rand Imaginet. I'm also joined here today by uh, Scott, Dr. Scott Hoover, who's a professional engineer, industrial engineer, and a product lifecycle management specialist. So uh, what we're doing here today is uh, earlier this year, Autodesk acquired Upchain, which is a, a cloud-based product lifecycle management and product data management system. So this is our first webinar, and it's really meant to be a basic introduction to this new Autodesk offering. So I would say, um, you know, stay tuned down the road and we'll get into more specific use cases and workflows in future webinars. So real simple agenda. I'm gonna walk you through a series of, of slides about the technology, really to set up Scott to show you the application. And then at the end, uh, we'll go ahead and talk to you about, you know, if you want to see more, learn more, what do you do next? So, uh, so we'll leave that for the end. Before I jump into Upchain, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about why Scott and I are presenting this to you today. So, uh, for one thing, Imagine it is a platinum partner for, for Autodesk. And then we're also a wholly owned subsidiary of RAND Worldwide Corporation. And RAND is a family of technology companies. And what we do is we acquire, we resell, we create, we implement technology for our clients to drive better employee and customer experiences. So we've got an extensive reach uh, with more than 40 offices. We've got over 400 employees. And our engineering group is, has more than 120 subject matter experts to really cover all the major engineering discipline. So being big is important, but we really pride ourselves on being the best team in the industry. And some of the points that would make us unique in the world of PLM or specific to this audience is that our sales and services teams are focused into cross-functional groups. So let me give you some examples. So I have vertically focused sales teams. So we actually have two dedicated PLM teams, along with my other manufacturing teams. We do business consulting and solution architecture, so we can help our clients design the system of their future. We have a highly experienced data management group that's been helping companies large and small for decades. The Imagine that PLM services team focuses on implementing the Autodesk PLM solutions, while the RAN 3D team focuses on training and adoption for the Dassault and PTC PLM solutions. And then our Ascent Group helps our clients develop their product documentation as well as document their standards. So they also write courseware for the major CAD vendors and Autodesk being you know, one of the biggest ones where you know, we, we deliver documentation all around the world to, uh, to train people. Ransom helps provide simulation consulting that gives digital answers to tough real world physical problems. And then we have a substantial software engineering group that really can help anything happen. So if you can think it, they can probably make it happen in a system. So, and finally, we, we leverage our training and support. Uh, a lot of what we do that through is our learning management system called Productivity Now, it really helps with the adoption of technology that we implement. So, so finally wrapping that all up, we've got 30 years experience with our customer. We've got dedicated teams. We have a, a proven implementation methodology. So, so we're talking to you today about this solution because we can help you implement it and mi minimize the risk um, going, of going through a, a technology project. All right, so now let's talk about Upchain. First, I wanted, I, I, I'd like to, I guess, wh why would a company consider Upchain? So, when we go out and see customers, I mean, you know, one of the things that I see is, although their products and service may differ, uh, the, the complexity, you know, from complexity from one company to another, they all share this common need to generate, manage, and relate information. So many of the companies that I work with uh, do a really good job of developing systems and tools that address the needs of departments and individual users. 
And we've really seen over the pandemic, the lim limitations of those types of systems and they've just been exposed. But what we see is sharing information is vital to product development across the enterprise, especially now you're being forced to work in remote teams. So, but without a product lifecycle management solution to help generate, relate, and manage that information, data tends to get lost, it gets misinterpreted, it goes unused, and that's because it's typically stored and managed, managed in multiple databases, emails, uh, spreadsheets, document format. So, and as things continue to get more complex, we grow and change, this increased complexity will continue to apply a negative impact on the ability for companies to use disconnected, slow, painful systems and processes. So to wrap that up, I would say, you know, for a lot of companies that we're seeing right now, it's time to digitally transform. That's why you should consider UpChain. So UpChain solves some of those pain points because it's, it's an open system. It's out of the box. It's extensible. It's configurable. And it brings together all documents from parts and drawings to specifications and to a single system. You can use whatever CAD system you want. And then we'll take the data, different formats, and merge it together for you. It lets others view engineering data, no matter what the source is, in a neutral format. So you know, whether it's Inventor or SolidWorks, Katia, or some kind of ECAD system, we'll put it in a neutral format and let stakeholders view it. So you get to see the data. So whatever stakeholder you are, you know, you get access to it, access to it, you'll be able to use it, interact with it, and leverage it for your own work product. So that's really how we see the future of work, which is here now, and it's up chain. So that brings me to the platform. So let me officially introduce you to the Autodesk All Cloud PDM PLM platform upchain. So it really connects people to data through flexible processes, and it makes it easier for your organization to collaborate and manage on complex product and project development processes. So I highlighted some very core applications here. You can see a highlighted bill material, change management, CAD and data management, supplier management. However, you can see there's other applications like in new product introduction, project and program management, quality management, and there's other configurable workflows that you can add. So Upchain takes companies from disconnected teams where because the typical shortfalls and breakdowns between departmental systems, Excel has to be used to massage and translate the data between departments. Communication has to happen through a series of manual processes, including meetings, phone calls, emails, and electronic or paper documents, which is what I like to refer to as time-wasting activities that we simply can't afford anymore. So, what Upchain does is it is a platform that rides horizontally across all these departments. So it manages cross-departmental processes, such as new product introductions, quality, and that enterprise change in a single system. It also removes waste from those processes by making them more efficient through easier access to information and allowing the organization to focus more on value added tasks and less on those time wasting activities. So it also removes the need to duplicate data across multiple systems, eliminating unnecessary work and making sure that everybody's on the same page with the same up-to-date information. So although I'm not suggesting upchain will immediately fix everything, it does give companies a platform, I'll stress platform, to drive process maturity from manual siloed processes to becoming more organized and managed across multiple functional groups to eventually managing the entire process and eventually tying all those processes together into a single optimized system. All right, 
so shifting gears a little bit, I'm, I'm going to now warm up for Scott a little bit by talking about some of the more specific functions of UpChain. So it's a native cloud product data management system. So you can access UpChain from CAD tools and business systems that you already know and use. So um, that would be the CAD tool that you're used to. That would be office applications, things like that. And just to pre-answer any questions before they come, we're not asking you to change any CAD system. We're, we really work with all the major players. So, so it's a great choice for companies that have even multi-CAD environments to combine that data in one system. So it has built-in revision control. So it helps you track changes automatically. So you know who changed what, when they did it, and why they did it. So full traceability. You can quickly upload and download files from the cloud. And this is a really a unique technology to upchain. One of the questions that a lot of people have, you know, how quick is it? Well, proprietary technology uh, makes it actually pretty darn fast. So, and then by the way, on the, the main screen, you can see a couple of interfaces. The, the SolidWorks interface flashed in on the main screen at first. And then the panel to the right that's highlighted right now is actually the Katia plugin. In regards to program and project management, Upchain supports both top-down and bottom-up approaches to projects. So whether your company makes assignments for project work or designs from the bottom up, Upchain has you covered. You can manage when tasks are due, stay on top of them, and instantly report on project status so you know where things are in the push of a button. From a product management perspective, you can establish a single source record for your products and projects. So you manage all of the relevant product documentation in a single place. So Upchain will keep track. It will also keep track of the uh, changes as your product progresses through its product lifecycle. Oh, important one here, change management. So the configuration of change management is actually that process is captured in the system. So your your processes, ECRs, ECN, ECOs, whatever you call them, and other change processes have a permanent home inside of this system. They're designed in and they stay there. So you can see some of the standards that come out of the box uh, listed in the arrows up top. And then you can certainly tailor the workflows that you need without being a, a custom coder like traditional PLM systems would, would take but it's, um, there's just a workflow editor to go and actually make changes to these workflows. So, and then beyond that, what's important in change management is participation for people. So it actually extended and non-CAD teams can review and mark up design documents without having native applications. So they'd be able to get in, evaluate a system, mark it up if, you know, if you're working in uh, Inventor, let's say, without Inventor and be able to do those markups and send it back to design. So really strong collaboration there. From a supplier management perspective, uh, supplier the supplier workflows support uh, request for quote or, or RFQ. And uh, this workflow is especially interesting because it facilitates and automates a supplier portal. So you automatically have this supplier portal. And what that does is grants a supplier access to a bill of material item for the purposes of quoting and you could adjust workflows but um, but by standardizing uh, an RFQ type workflow with a supplier the two companies don't have to rely on conventional and incredibly slow inefficient uh, processes like emailing back and forth so and then uh, just to, to mention because we're obviously distributing data around uh, up Upchain, it, it keeps your information secure and it really gives you full control over what others can see and do in the system. So you have control over that. On quality management, Upchain closes the loop between quality and engineering and that helps engineers, designers, and supply chain make more informed decisions. So you can do things like manage quality tasks, requirements, suppliers, requests for information, and all that again uh, within that central platform. So the first image I showed was a 
production part approval process, which is something that we've commonly seen in the world of PLM in the automotive industry. So um, from a business process and reporting, again, you can tailor the workflows that you need without custom coding using the uh, modular workflow editor. And you can use the intuitive dashboards to quick, quickly access data um, really with a click of a button. And that real-time reporting gives you bis business insights instantly. So uh, with the reporting tools, you can dramatically cut down on you know, meeting prep time and reporting time. It can really just be look at some reports, evaluate them, and then you're ready to go. So saving you a lot of time. All right, engineering data management. So Upchain takes the CAD bomb and it allows it to be extended and combined with other non-CAD data, such as let's just say manufacturing consumables or packaging. So the system also allows you to track the bomb, capture it over time. So snapshots over time when things happen, it's captured in the system. So you're capturing as built or as maintained type of information. Another example is um, adding an e-bomb. So we can take data from a program like ORCAD or Altium and actually add it in to the CAD bomb. So we've got a, a full M-bomb, e-bomb. And um, again, Uptain helps you bring this all together in one system. I know I've repeated myself a lot on that, but it, it's such a, a it's such a, a valid true point. Okay, and finally, last slide for me, and then uh, and then we'll turn it over to Scott. But uh, the application does have an open REST service API, which uh, can be used to integrate with virtually any type of enterprise system. So. It's not everything to everybody. There's other, you know, you've, you've got other applications out there. You've got CRM and ERP and MES systems. So you may need to integrate with some of those. You can do that. And one of the, one of the examples uh, that I would bring up is uh, Upchain's PDM and PLM capabilities could be used with an ERP system. So we could push design engineering or new product information information up to the ERP system. So uh, folks could evaluate the data up there, look at viewables, um, what, whatever whatever it is, we can push it into that ERP system. Then also other data can be pulled back down into the PLM system from ERP, which could be pricing or inventory information, pull it back down onto the bill material items. So uh, design and engineering can make good decisions on, you know, are we picking the right component? Is it at the right cost? Are we going to meet our cost targets, et cetera? So, and that, that really allows companies to start achieving this seamless digital thread across the business, which, you know, in the end is leading to a digital transformation within the company. Okay, so hopefully that helps just kind of lay a foundation and, for Scott, and when he walks through the platform, you know, usually you got to see things a couple of times before it really starts to sink in. So hopefully that helped. I appreciate you um, taking the time, allowing me to walk through uh, the slide deck and kind of explain this platform from from that sense. And uh, now I'm going to turn it over to Scott to do a walkthrough. So Scott, the floor is yours. Hello, everybody. Uh, as Jason said, my name is Scott Hoover, and I am a uh, PLM specialist with the Imaginet Technologies team. Uh, so I'm going to plan to take the next 25 minutes or so and, and give you a walkthrough of the UpChain product. Uh, more specifically, I'm going to try to focus on some of the uh, topics that Jason covered, uh, such as the design management, uh, product slash project management and, and change management and talk about uh, those mostly those three areas and how you can manage all of those different business processes all directly in upchain and and how and talk about how no matter what your role is in the system how you are able to basically stay solely in the upchain product to be able to complete most if not all aspects of your job. So to begin with our tour, uh, we're going to start with what you see right here on our screen, which is the UpChain main dashboard. So when a user logs in, they're 
automatically in, presented with information that is specific to them. So as you can see here, my, my list of projects, these are all projects in which I am a, a team member on, uh, whether I'm a designer, an engineer, project manager, uh, no matter what my role is, you're able to set up your list of projects to uh, show um, this high level information. Um, and it can very quickly give you an idea on where different aspects of these different projects stand uh, through the course of their life cycle. Down near the bottom, uh, we have a few other sections. Uh, first, we over here on the right hand side, uh, I'll draw your attention to the My Assignments area. And this area here is simply uh, different tasks that have been assigned to me uh, throughout these different projects and, and what the status of those tasks are, um, knowing that I have some type of action that I need to do uh, for those tasks throughout the different projects that I'm a part of. In addition, in the middle of the screen, we have the my favorite items and this is simply just an area in which I can mark objects in the system as favorite items and have them show up here in my list just to provide me some quick access uh, to those records or uh, artifacts. And then finally on the left hand side I have the activity stream which shows me uh, the different, uh, the past records that I have viewed and, and again allows me just a quick access back to those records um, should I need to get back to them. So we're going to come back up here now and start to dive in a little bit deeper. And so uh, we, we heard Jason talk a little bit about the idea of product slash project management. Um, and, and I really want to first talk about what what we consider a project in Upchain. And, th and the truth is projects um, at their highest level are simply just um, a, an organizing item. It's a, it's a container for you to, cont uh, to put all of your product de development data within, whether that be CAD data, bill of material data, documents, diff different business processes like change processes, quality processes, and any of the data or collateral that might go along with those products uh, or projects, they can go directly into the project record. Now, how do you really define what a project is? And, and the truth is that that can be done a lot of different ways. Uh, most commonly, it is very much product focused. So the idea that a project represents either a product or a product line. Now, it could be set up um, on a more customer basis. So you see I have a project here that's based upon a customer. Um, but it could also be based on a single SKU. Uh, that's one of the advantages of Upchain is there's a lot of flexibility in the way you can go through and manage your projects and or products. So just keep that in mind. Now, throughout my demonstration, I'm going to go through it, uh, go through a particular project that's really representative of a, a product line. Uh, in particular, I'm going to use this uh, CTC robot uh, product. So I'm going to click on that. And by doing so, I'm going to be able to dive in a little bit deeper onto this specific product. Uh, and and get some more information and more details pertaining to it. So I'm going to open up the, the product dashboard or the project dashboard. And again, very quickly on this dashboard, I'm get, able to see um, in a little more granular detail the different uh, statuses of different aspects of my project. So you can see in terms of different uh, assignments and tasks, where uh, where I stand in terms of project completion, uh, do I have anything that's overdue, uh, do I have any critical assignments that need to be addressed and taken care of. All of this is real-time data, meaning I'm able to click on this stuff and have it populate uh, or show me exactly what is populating and providing back to me uh, that data. So I can see what tasks I have overdue. I'm able to come in here and see what different uh, completed assignments that I have and so forth. 
I'm also able to see who is a part of the, this team, and I'll, and I'll get into that just in a little bit more detail here momentarily. But again, I'm able at a very quick glance be able to come in here and, and quickly assess where I stand on this particular project. So if I'm if I wear that project manager's hat, you know I'm I'm able to switch between these projects very quickly and just assess where where I stand on all of the projects that I'm managing. If I'm a designer or an engineer, I, I and I'm uh, I want to get an idea of where I stand on a particular project in terms of maybe building out a bill of material or making a design or creating a uh, you know an assembly project or something like that in in a CAD software again I'm able to come in here and, and quickly see that data so now I would like to draw your attention over here to the left hand side and the menu that shows up here and really uh, I like to think of this menu kind of as the the day in the life of your product development process so I'm able to go through here and switch over and take a look at the bill of material information. Now we're going to come back to this here in a moment. Um, we're going to go through these other aspects of the uh, the menu first, but and come back and focus a little bit deeper on the on the bill of material. But you can see I am able to come in and see what my bill of material is for this project and and so forth. The next aspect that we'll talk about is the project management tab. So within the project management tab, much like um, other project management softwares out there like uh, Microsoft Project, uh, you can build out a Gantt chart of your project and quickly see where uh, different tasks are in the timeline. You can see dependencies, successors, predecessors, and, and really be able to, to gauge kind of where you stand throughout uh, throughout this particular project. I can come in here and create different tasks and assign them to different people with due dates and, and so forth. And with each one of these, I can click on the specific task and have it pop up with uh, more specific information related to that task. And then in addition to that, one of the things that Jason talked about was the idea that all of your information lives in the system for a particular project, whether that be the bill of materials data or uh, the CAD data and specifically documents. So let's say I have documents that go uh, that are deliverables as part of these different tasks. I can come in here to the documents area of a particular task and either attach up a document or link it to it, a document that already exists within the system. And, and the value that this brings is that I'm very, very quickly connecting the deliverables of my project directly into the project management aspect of the tool. So I don't have to rely on going to an outside system to get some of that information. It all lives directly here within Upchain. I can also relate these uh, different tasks to specific items in a bill of material simply by coming in and adding them and, and searching for them. Uh, so I can come in and search for a particular product and add it to my um, add it to my particular task. So again, it, it I just wanted to point out here the idea that you know while this is definitely not a Microsoft project and there are going to be some aspects of a project management tool that Upchain does not have the advantage that it does have is that it can quickly um, give you an idea of where you stand throughout your project and more importantly you can link different deliverables and things uh, that live within the system to these specific tasks so that you're not having to rely on being able to go out to other areas or excuse me other softwares to gather information and such so if i come back over here to the uh, menu for our project we're going to move on into the business processes area now again, I'm going to come back to this here in a little bit um, in some more details, but let, at a very high level, let's talk about the different uh, business processes 
that are associated or can be associated to this project. So first of all, we have a requirements tab and a quality assurance tab. Both of these tabs, you can set up records or artifacts that represent, um, in this case, either different requirements that have to take place for a project or maybe some different QA uh, things that might be related to our project. Um, but, but I want to pull your attention to these middle three tabs, the uh, investigation requests, the change request, and change notices. All three of these tabs um, relate specifically to the change process. And uh, after we get into the bill of materials and we, and we talk about the idea of being able to build out a bomb and such, we're going to come back to this and, and take a look at what it takes to build out a change request to be able to, to push a change that we have made to our bill of materials uh, and, and push that out to a new revision of our, of our bomb. So now I'm going to go into the documents area and we've we've already kind of talked about this, but the documents area is again, it's an area in which you're going to be able to come in and load up really any type of document that you want with really with the exception of your your CAD drawings and project files and such that's gonna that's gonna live in another area that we're gonna take a look at here shortly but you can see we can come in here we can build out different folder structures to house this information and and then load up documents and so i've got a couple documents in here that we can kind of take a look at so i've got this data sheet that if i click on over here on the right hand side i, I get a preview of um, of that document what it contains i have some of the metadata associated to that document but then i can also go through and link these documents to different business processes i can link them to items i can link them um, uh, to other documents. Uh, so I can build out this chain of information across the different areas uh, within Upchain. Uh, so again, that I'm able to provide that quick uh, access to different aspects of, um, of the tool. So, you know, as an example, if I've got, um, let's say I've got a spec sheet in here uh, and my spec sheet, you know, relates to a specific material let's just say it's some aluminum and i can then go and relate that spec sheet um, uh, of aluminum to a particular or to all of my items that are made out of aluminum so that i can very quickly whether i be here on the document i can very quickly see all items in which use this type of aluminum or if i'm actually on that item i can uh, come back and see the specific spec sheet for that aluminum. So again, just highlighting the idea that, hey, we can build all of these relationships, have all of this information directly in Upchain, and it doesn't require you to go to any outside system to be able to get the needed information to be able to complete your tasks and such. Now, finally, the last section here is the uh, project details. Uh, and this is where you can come in and provide just some more granular information for the uh, specific project you've created. Uh, I want to point out over here on the right hand side the ability to add team members and specifically assign them a role. And why, the, what the, why this is important is with those business processes that we looked at a little bit ago, like the change requests. Those processes, while they come out of the box, you can go in and modify them to, to meet your specific business processes needs. And as a part of that, instead of uh, assigning or creating a number of different business processes in which you're setting up specific people um, by name to give approvals or things like that, what you can do is actually set up the business process to uh, have approvals by role type. So when I hit the first change review, I can set it up such that the project manager, the electrical designer, the mechanical designer, all have to give their approval. So what that allows you to do then is to utilize that workflow across all projects or more than just one specific project where you would be potentially limited if you created that workflow specific to individual names. 
Okay, so I promised we were going to come back to the bill of material and dive in a little bit deeper. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've come back to my uh, bill of material for my um, my project here, and we're going to take a look at one of these assemblies here. So I'm going to open up the, the box motor assembly. And so I click on that assembly and you can see very quickly it opens up and shows me all of the components and sub assemblies that uh, make up this overall box motor assembly. And when I look at this, there's a really is a lot of information that's presented right away to you. Uh, I, I'm automatically presented with the bill of material, uh, the status of all of the components. Uh, I get these nice little thumbnail images of the components and so forth. But what's really nice about the UpChain tool is that I can actually go ahead and take a look at um, a visualization of the uh, CAD drawing directly here in the tool without having to go out to a native software, whether that be SolidWorks, Inventor, Creo, whatever your CAD uh, software of choice is, um, I don't have to necessarily go out to that just to be able to get a look of my assembly. And this is really nice for individuals who really, you know, may not be CAD users or don't even have a license to the CAD user or to the CAD software. So I can come in here and I can open up the view and the view model option and that's going to open up my uh, an assembly visualization uh, of my box motor. And like any other uh, CAD software out there, I can now come in and explore a little bit. I can go in and I can take this and explode it out to see all the separate components that uh, make up this assembly. I can come in here and cut the plane in a certain direction to uh, see different the internal aspects of our components and such. Of course, I can come in and just uh, rotate the assembly around to get a view of what it looks like and such. And again, I can do all of this without having to get directly in to uh, a CAD software. And, and with this as well, I can come in here and if I'm maybe out on the shop floor and I have discovered an issue or, um, or something like that, I can come in here and I can add a markup. So let's just say I've you know, discovered uh, uh, an issue with the diameter of a pipe. Um, issue with diam pipe diameter. So I can create a markup here, and um, and with that, I can now come in and directly from here create an investigation report. Now, we briefly talked about investigation reports uh, a little bit ago when we talked about the business processes, but really what an investigation report is is kind of a catch-all or a starting point uh, to start different business workflows that you might have. Now, out of the box, when you look here at this workflow drop-down menu, I have just two, uh, two business workflows. I have an issue workflow as well as a supplier workflow. But I can come in to the back end as an administrator and create any number of workflows that I would like. Uh, maybe I'd like this to spawn a change request or um, uh, a supplier, um, a SCAR, or something like that, or a Kappa, or a non-conformance. You can really go any which way that you would like to with these workflows. The idea is, though, that with this investigation report directly here in the tool, I can spawn a workflow that will then go to either correct an issue that I have found, or maybe um, issue out or begin the process for an RFQ or, or whatever you know business process that you would like to perform. So before I wrap up my, uh, my time here, the one last thing I'd like to show you is now how we, how UpChain 
it can be integrated directly with a CAD software and how, you know, if you wear that engineer's hat or the designer's hat or a drafter's hat, you can stay within the software that you spend 90% of your time in without having to jump back and forth between the design software and uh, upchain. So what I'm going to do, uh, so Inventor is my design software of choice here. And when I open up Inventor over here on the right hand side, you'll see the upchain plugin. So this plugin um, works directly in Inventor. As you can see, it's kind of built right into the into the software. And you're going to see some what should be some very familiar information for you. I've got some of my projects favorited here and I can come in and directly in the software come and take a look at uh, the bill of material for my project that I'm working on. So you can see that the box motor that we were just looking at a little bit ago and then the other sub assemblies. Uh, so I'm going to look here at the bottom guide rail and from here I can come in and I can open this up directly in Inventor. So this just took the saved project files that were up in the cloud and, and, and download them to my local computer. And now I'm able to come here in Inventor and uh, if I need to make some type of change, I can go ahead and make my change here in Inventor and then push all of that information directly right back up into the cloud, up into Upchain. So let's just say um, I, I have this uh, support rod here and I know for this support rod, I need to um, make a change to the length. Uh, if I look at this length, it's, um, it's showing 390 millimeters and I know, hey, I need, that's not right. I need to, um, I need to expand that out to be 400 millimeters. So I can first come in here. Uh, first, what I want to do actually, uh, before I get into that, is I want to come over here to my support rod and I want to check it out. So checking it out, a couple things are going to happen. Once I've checked it out, so I have checked it out and one, now that I've done that, I've got this little lock symbol here. And this little lock symbol is indicating to me that I've checked it out. And, that, and I know that because it's green. If it were a red color, then what that would actually show is that somebody else on my team has this particular uh, component checked out. So, but now that I have it checked out, I can come back over here and we're gonna take a look at that support rod again. And we want to open up this particular part of the assembly. And then we're gonna come in and we're gonna look at the sketch here and we're gonna adjust this to be 400 millimeters. All right, so I've made my adjustment and I can now come back to my assembly and um, we're going to, uh, actually, we're gonna come back up to the main assembly here. And we're going to check this assembly back in. And so by checking this back in, we're gonna check it back in and now checking it back in, we're able to, um, once we've checked it back in, you're gonna see that this part is no longer in a released state. That R that you see along next to each one of these represents that those components are released. But now you see that my support rod as well as the main assembly uh, have a symbol of D, which show that, are, that they are in development. Now, if I switch back over uh, to the cloud-based up chain and I come back into my bill of material view, you will see now that that information has been pushed back up here uh, into the cloud. It's showing that these items are in development. And now I am ready to take this and push it into a change order or a change request. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to send this to a change request. And so as a part of that, 
uh, I want to put in some type of revision note to say adjusted uh, assembly. And uh, more specifically, on the component level, I'm going to say extended uh, rod length. Now, I have to assign my change request a workflow, uh, and I have the ability uh, to have multiple change request workflows. Now, in this particular instance, I only have the one. Uh, so I'm going to assign that particular workflow to it, and I'm going to go ahead and save my change request. Now I can start my workflow. Now, in this particular example, I wear all the hats. I am you know, the mechanical designer, I'm the project manager, uh, but if I was wearing a specific hat, let's just say I, uh, I had a drafter go and just do what I just showed you, and I am now the lead mechanical engineer, I will have just gotten an email that says, hey, somebody has created a change request It needs your attention, your view. So I can come in here, take a look at what was changed, and if I approve or I am in agreement with what was done, then I can come in and release the items. And now I have released these back out into production. And um, the revision has upped from what it had been previously to its next revision. And again, we are now we now have a released, a uh, fully released assembly back out into the production floor. Okay, so I am pretty much at the end of my time now. So I hope I've been able to provide you with the, albeit a very quick uh, overview of the EpChain product. Uh, the truth is, I could probably spend a couple hours going through the different aspects of this tool, and and the advantages and the value that it can bring to your uh, to your organization, but uh, I hope I've been able to give you, um, you know, a, a quick view of the the different aspects of Upchain and, and the value it can bring to to either your design management, your your product slash project management, your change management, uh, and I, you know, I didn't even get to talk about things like supplier management. I, I think we're going to have some additional webinars in the future around some of the uh, other workflows like supplier management and quality management. Uh, but I, I thank you all for your time, um, and please, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. I'd be more than happy to help you. Thank you.